Hey, hey there we are. There's the man. How are you? How are you? Selamat pagi, Pak Gareth. Selamat pagi, apa kabar? I'm so sorry about the 10 o'clock, 9 o'clock. No, no, don't worry about it. Don't worry about it. It's all good. It's all good. I was, I was actually checking uh, yesterday just to see what time is it in Wales. And, and mm. it was actually, uh, it says that Wales was the same time as London. Uh, yes, it is, was, yeah. Oh, so maybe there's just some daylight saving uh, over... I think so. Last, yeah, it changes the, every. Ah. It changes every. I don't know. Maybe like six months or so. I can't remember exactly when it is. I probably should know. But um, yeah, and it, it it gets kind of confusing because then you got the LA switch as well, which is like right. seven hours or eight hours depending on that. So yeah. So happy to see you. Yeah, good to see you too as well. It's been yeah. a long, long okay. time. Yeah. It's been a long time. So I have to have uh, this. I have to ask this first question: Who cut your mm. hair? Uh, I did. <laughs> um, yeah, it was. I was. I had. A, I had a whole thing. I was planning to let it grow out and then be like, okay, well, let's see when all of this is over, how long it gets, and right. then I lasted about maybe twelve, fifteen weeks of just not cutting it, and then I, I, I had like one day where I literally had like nothing to do, couldn't think of anything to do, and I thought oh, I'll just shave my head. Um, so I did that, and then I. <laughs> I shaved my well son's done. head then as well, which was fun. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so tell me. Uh, we're just going to have a chit chat with you because we miss you. Everybody misses uh-huh. you in Indonesia. Um, so, I'm just going to ask you. So, you're now in Wales. Uh, yeah. Which part of Wales exactly? Are you in, in, in the city? Uh, in, over in uh, the... Cardiff? In, south, in, in, in south of Wales, over in Swansea I Way. See. It's not, not too far from Cardiff. Cardiff's the capital. And, and right. we're about, about an hour away from the capital then in that respect then. Okay. Out in the sticks in the countryside, yeah. So yeah. How nice! Yes, yeah, it's really nice. So for friends in Indonesia, teman-teman yang nggak tahu di Wales ya, Wales itu bukan bagian dari Inggris ya, dia negara sendiri, uh, tapi bagian dari United Kingdom. Populasi 3 juta plus plus, right? Three million plus population. Something like that, yeah. Something like that, and it's a beautiful place. One day uh, I I want to go there. Uh, tapi yeah, you have to visit. Masih... Yes, Mas Gareth masih bisa bahasa Indonesia? Masih bisa sedikit. <laughs> it's been a long yet. time since I've had to use it, and I'm <laughs> I've been really nervous to know if I've like forgotten a lot. So yeah, yeah. I I and also when I learned Indonesian, I learned from my crew, you know. Right. So I learned a lot of sort of bahasa jalan instead of yeah, sort of yeah, the yeah, formal yeah. formal version yeah, of Indonesian. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Which is great. So who's in the house with you? Is this just you and the family or you have extended family with you? Uh, no, just, just, us, just us at the moment, obviously. My Lovely. parents live yeah. about 30, 40 minutes away. Um, okay. So they're, they're there. Um, obviously, they're vulnerable to the situation right now. Yes. So, yes. so we have to kind of keep distance and everything else, which is, right. you know, thank God for the technology because we're able to chat on FaceTime and, and keep right. up with each other and things like that. That's, that's pretty important. So we try to talk to them. I mean, I, I talk to them personally, like every day. And then we try to do little family calls two or three times a week, That's that kind nice. of thing. And as much as we can, really. And then two dogs running around somewhere in the garden at the moment. So, yeah. Okay, so four of you in the house. Yeah, four of us all together, yeah. Uh, so Maya, Sophie, and you have a little boy. Yeah, a little boy, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, he's... Um, What's his name? Uh, Thomas. Uh, Thomas. Mm-hmm. How nice. That's that's just wonderful. So, okay. Um you can say hi. I saw Joe Taslim just then coming in. So oh, really? Uh, he's, he's, yeah, he's here. Uh, Excellent. Hey, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been checking in with. I've been checking in with the guys every now and then as well. You know, it's like you kind he's of like checking. reach out and see how they're doing. Yeah. Um, you know, so we all we all keep tabs on each other and and, and see how we're coping with the sort of you know the the descent into sanity insanity sometimes. You know, so yeah. So that's what he said, Gareth. Your eyes are red. <laughs> yeah, I've not been sleeping so well. <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, me too. I'm just trying to find things to do. So we have this little program called Cabin Fever. Mm. Uh, it's actually for myself and Riri because we we do have. I think we are, uh, you know, seeing the symptoms of of uh, cabin fever. So we thought, let's just do something, chit chat with friends, and yeah. uh, so we do it every Monday and and Thursday. Um, nice. And sometimes the connection is good, Gareth, but sometimes it's not. So if somehow we get uh, cut off, just come back in. We'll, okay, we'll cool. continue the, the... Okay, one thing out of the way. Congrats with Gangs of London. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. What a growing yeah. reviews. I think it's fantastic. 
it's just a pity that uh, we can't see it here. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It's it's one of those things. I mean, I mean a lot of people are seeing it somehow. <laughs> but, oh, uh, yeah. oh my God! But it's, um, it's yeah, no, but it, it, it's 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 it, it happens. Um, it, it got released here in the UK, uh, April twenty third. So about three, four weeks ago, four weeks ago, it got released. Um, and so this week is is the fifth fifth episode broadcasting traditionally they, they did right. it in a way in the uk where they released it as a box set so the whole thing came out as once I but see. then okay. it also airs traditionally one episode per week for people who want to take it take it easy and take it one episode at a time yeah. um yeah. it's pretty intense stuff actually yeah um i shudder at the idea of how badly it might get censored when it does broadcast in indonesia if, <laughs> if, if it can be i don't know we'll see Oh, well, I can't wait because, you know, everybody's talking about, oh, episode five, you know, I've been reading about it. I don't even know what's going on with episode five. Um, that was, um, but, that yeah, was my baby. Ep uh, okay. Episode five was my baby. Episode five was um, in every season of like television, you have that one sort of standalone episode, which is allowed to right. sort of take, just take the story away from the main characters. And so that's what we did with episode five. When we did episode five, I managed to bring the story away from London and bring it back to Wales. So oh, uh, essentially, essentially exists as me kind of playing on the sort of Western cowboy movies that I used to love watching and stuff like that. So it's the kind wild of, bunch and stuff. Yeah, yeah the wild yeah. bunch and everything else. Yeah. So it's a bit of a standoff episode then in that respect. And so it's so it's uh, it's good fun. So it's actually based on a very famous uh, a game, right? Uh, uh, a PlayStation uh, game. Uh, yeah. Games of London. Uh, yeah. It's very, yeah. Tell us about it. it. So they, they basically the guys of the guys at Pulse Films, who are the, the guys who kind of um, produced the show, they they came to me with the concept of they had, I think they had the IP rights to the video game, which was an old right. PSP game, um, and and initially they wanted to do a film franchise with it, and then we, me and myself, man, Matt Flannery, who's my obviously my DP on the films I've done, and then the co-creator yeah. of this show, we both kind of felt that. Um, it would work better as a long form narrative if we did it as a TV show instead of a film, because in a film franchise, we wouldn't be able to get to fully get under the, the, the sort of the, the skin of the, the other characters, the sort of the other right. cultures that make up London, because London's right. so metropolitan, it's so global as a city that we yeah. wanted to do something that would be able to do justice to what London is like. And so right. we talked to them about doing it as a TV show instead. And so when we came up with our own sort of like separate concept then for the, for the show itself, um, it started to move further and further away from the video game. So the, all we really kept was the title itself then, which is just, you know. <laughs> so we, yeah, so it's, it's not too much of a, it's not a faithful adaptation of a video game to be okay, truthful. Okay, okay. So you just find it that it could become a, a long form story, uh, you know, a, a great long form storytelling rather than a, a feature film. I think so, yeah. I just felt, I think we all, we both felt it, me and Matt both felt that we had more, too much story to tell to fit within a two hour running time. And so right. doing television would allow us to, you know, explore deeper the storylines, deeper the characters and, yeah. um, and, 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 and really get to kind of go quite wild in some of those episodes then as well. <laughs> so, yeah. All I can, all I can read are, are all the comments and the articles, you know, about how wonderful it is, how intense it is. Mm. The intensity of Gareth Evans that we know of course, <laughs> and probably more because we, we haven't seen it. And another thing I want to get out of the way, because when uh, uh, people know that I was going to talk to you uh, uh, today, of course, most of the questions are about the Raid 3. So just <laughs> to, to, to keep the agony away from you, I'm just going to yeah. tell everybody that, that uh, there's a special podcast, uh, Empire Spoiler podcast. You told about this, the, the plots that you had for the Raid 3 and also on IndieWire, you know, you tell everyone yeah. uh, uh, what, how it's going to be, but also at the same time that maybe it will never happen, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, S sadly, yeah. I think I think it's one of those things where, and I just saw Eco pop up and say Boule, so you know, yes. um, <laughs> um, which is always I nice. Um, <laughs> but it's um, it for me, it was always that thing of uh, we we all we all kind of loved the idea of what we could do with the raid three. It'd be very different, obviously, but it needed to sort of it needed to happen about three years ago for it to really yeah. happen. I know and, what you mean. Yes, yes. You know, yes. we all we all we all got busy with other projects. I think we all started doing other things. Yeah. Um and, and the thing is, for me it's like this, like I, I love the fact that people still have 
a passion for the Raid 3. Raid 3. I love the fact that people are still passionate about that film because, you know, we made right. the first one in our own little bubble. We had no idea that people were going to respond to it. We had no idea people were going to enjoy those films. Um, yeah. and, and so to see that kind of passion and enthusiasm, it's very heartwarming to us, obviously. But, you yeah. know, it's like I, I, got to, I got to watch as, you know, Ico and the boys got to go off and be in Star Wars and, you know, and then go off and do Mile 22 and go off and, you know, have his own TV show. It's incredible. So, you know, to see yeah. their achievements then and to see them continue to work and from strength to strength. It was just one of those things where we all kind of got busy doing our own things. And so, yeah. you know, it, it was it was five it was more than five years ago now when we made the raid two. What was it? Yeah, six yeah. years ago, I think. Six yeah, years ago now when we, when we right? 2014, we released yeah. it. So I think we were shooting in 2013. Right. So, like, so like seven, seven years, years ago when we made it. Um, yeah. And so I think I think what will remain is a desire for all of us to want to work together again. So I think, you know, we will find a project that allows right. us to be back within the same framework. And, right. and you know, I've, I've been chatting to Eco about various ideas for a project oh, that I know wonderful. we both want to make at some point, but I got to sit down and write it. I got to sit down and <laughs> prepare it. Um, but we have ideas. So yeah, who, right. who knows? Just around the corner, hopefully. You never know. Okay, well, I will also save you the agony of uh, asking about how a Welsh man uh, uh, ended up being in Indonesia making. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I, I was watching all the interviews, you know, of you, and I could see you sitting there answering the same question. <laughs> how did it happen? But I do want to ask, though, uh, how did you meet Maya, Garrett? Um, oh, we met uh, a long time ago. It was, back, it was way back when we were both in university. So, yeah. In we, Wales? Uh, in Wales? Yeah, we, yeah, I, well, I, yeah, I was in Wales and she was in Paris at the time. So for that, so we, we met... We met there, and then um, obviously you know, we got we got together, and then had a long distance relationship for a while, and um, and, and yeah, and, and it, it it was obviously <laughs> a, a thing. <laughs> oh wow, that's amazing! And and also of course it's Maya that brought you uh, back to Indonesia to do the documentary yeah. of of Pencak Silat. Uh, a lot of people ask, uh, how can we watch that? I mean, what was it for exactly the the documentary that you made of of Pencak Silat? So, Interestingly, we so I got hired by um, it was it was through Christine Hacking and it was through right. Christine Hacking Films, and um, and Panasonic uh, Global Indonesia, um, ah, okay. and they they were putting together a documentary package, and the documentary patch package was to be I think it was like four or five different documentaries they were going to do about different elements of Indonesian culture, right. and so I got brought on board to do the first one, which was about okay. Pentak Silat. Ah, and see. so that that was kind of the first introduction for me to Indonesia in a traditional sense. Like, yeah, I mean, I'd been there once before, but right. as a holiday trip, um, not as a sort of place to go and work. And so when I did the documentary, that was my, I was there for about six months, I think. So we had a few right. months of research. Then we went off and shot for about six weeks traveling from, um, we went from West Sumatra across to Jakarta and into West Java. Um, and, and we saw some amazing people and, 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 and amazing characters. And part of that journey introduced me to Eco and the guys. So you yes. know, I met Eco and I met um, I met yeah, Pat yeah. Edwell and, and Yaya, and obviously yeah. I met and then Chechep and 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 all yeah. these guys. And so you know, that's how I got introduced to this martial art, and that's how I got introduced to the people who were practicing it. And 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 to be honest, like I fell in love with the philosophy of it. I fell in love with the fact that this was a traditional martial art that I had not seen represented on screen before, not properly. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. And so that was that was a major in, in, introduction in terms of the availability. I think the documentary kind of sat in limbo. We got to a certain point, and I think ah. the complete I think the completion funding fell through. Something went wrong. But um, basically, we got as far as everything except for the sound mix and the final grade. I so, see. I, I have I have the material sat somewhere in Jakarta <laughs> somewhere, um, oh and and they're all they're all just sat there. Um, so we you know we might look up trying to pick up and then see if we can do like a you know it'll, it, it's been a while it's been crikey knows that would have been 2007 I think when we did that so you know that's like 13 yeah. years old yeah Eco yeah, looks even yeah. more baby faced than that it's unbelievable. <laughs> um, and and so we might see if we can get if we can get like the files again. Hopefully the hard drive still works and we can get everything. Footage. Yeah, I, I have mean, like I, I have I, footage, right? the thing is I I have an offline cut that I still have the file for. Obviously it's not like broadcast quality because it's compressed, it's heavily yeah. compressed offline. So yeah. I have like a work print version of it with like right. subtitles and everything else, and it was everything except for the sound mix and the color grade. 
So you we know, should see it. It's historical. Yeah, I mean, you I'll know. see. I'll see if I'll see what we could do. See if we can actually put it up online somewhere. I think yeah. it's 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 interesting as a time capsule because obviously it was my first attempt at doing anything within the documentary <laughs> realm. So it's a little staged in places and stuff like that. But the intent was there. I mean, if that makes sense yeah. to show Silat not just as a martial art but also as uh, a lifestyle and a philosophy as well. Right, so that was, right. That was With religion and stuff, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, okay. Um, uh, the question is, yeah, you, you've been to Indonesia once before that project and then you came and then after that you did Marantau and we know by the rate and, and the rate too. All the crew just love you. They, they, they adore you. Um, so my question was, was there a difficulty set the first time that you have to work with all the Indonesian crew with limited Bahasa Indonesia, uh, how did you do it? Um, I, 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 I tip my hat to the crew because they were really supportive, like incredibly supportive. I mean, you know, I, I was, I was a foreigner coming into their country, making a <laughs> film in Maranta that was about their culture. Um, and, right. and everyone supported me. You know, I didn't have a single person say like, oh, you can't do that. Or, or, or nobody got in my way of what we were trying to do. Everyone was fully behind the, the film and the project and, 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 and what we were trying to say with it. Um, and so it, 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 was, it was really helpful. I think, you know, the, the key was obviously um, uh, Mastoro, Ario Sagantoro, my, yeah, my, my, yeah. My, my boss and my producer, um, you know, who was incredible to me throughout the entire time that we were working together in Indonesia. He he single handedly galvanized the crew around me. I mean, like you know, he had you know contacts with crew members that he had worked with, obviously from a commercials background, from a music video background, right. and then obviously he went on to work at um, MNC Pictures, with, which is where we met the first time. Right. And so you know, he he put the crew together. He assembled everyone together to support me. And so and just somehow he, it all clicks. It all coalesced. It all just came around and. You know, we were lucky because a lot of the crews, because they'd worked on commercials background, they'd also worked with, you know, a, a lot of Australian directors and things like that. So they right. had like a decent amount of English. So I was able right. to lean on that um, for my communication purposes. Also, Matt Flannery, my DP, came over as well and worked with um, Dimas as a, as, as a secondary yeah. DP who kind of helped us through it. And they were so collaborative. Everyone was so helpful. Um, uh, uh, and, you know, and then obviously I had, um, you know, such an amazing support uh, network there then. So, yeah, it was it didn't feel difficult. It didn't feel hard. Um, I just felt very fortunate to be in a situation where I had all of that that support. And they're all crazy about you now. They have and then they have nicknames for you. Babule, yeah. right? Babule, yeah. Yeah, no, that, 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 <laughs> I think I think Iko started that off, I think. I think that might have oh, been an Iko, Iko thing. Iko, was it? Iko is yeah. here. So Iko, did you start that? So there's a Babul and there's also Bugil, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, Bule Gila as well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, that's, I think that's great because I'm, I'm always fascinated with, with uh, uh, directors working not in their uh, own language, you know, whether mm. it's in, in France or in Europe or... Uh, I think it's 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 uh, fabulous, and somehow you you bring something just so intense, you know. Maybe because yeah. of that, you know, because of that uh, communication that you have to do, you know, uh, it it brings something else. So it was, um, it was yeah. sorry, it was it was really. I mean, it was really important to kind of have that that network. It was really important to have that support. I mean, you know, obviously Toro galvanized the crew, but then we also had like uh, Anna, who was my line producer. Right. Um, and she was, but she also did the translation of the script for me for for Miranda and see. for the Raid One. You know, so <laughs> right. so she was like she was really heavily involved in that, and just just having having these people kind of get behind the film was was imperative. So yeah, I have very yeah. very fond memories of everything we did back in Indonesia then. Because I mean, we had an experience. We did a film in in Timor, and we wanted to use their the the local language. Oh, okay, um, cool. But but we have to trust them. You know, every time they said, "How was it?" We just look at each other and say, "Yeah, I think that sounds okay." <laughs> yeah. We don't really know, you know, what, what, I, what exactly what they said, right? So we have to. Yeah, I had I had exactly that, but I, I had um, Paplontong pa was my my one of my ads on the project, and he was like in charge. He, right. he became in charge of all the fighters as, as projects went on, but he was my guy for 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 performances. So he'd be watching with me, and he'd be giving coaching to the to the actors and things like that in between takes as well. Um, and I'd be going up to him and be like, is, does that feel right? Does, does the intonation sound right to you? And, you know, we, we'd be discussing back and forth. So, uh, 
Paplontong, if you're listening, I love you so much. <laughs> <laughs> I also want to talk to you about uh, your father. You said that mm. he got you into uh, the love of watching films. Uh, you ended up watching a lot of action films with him through DVDs, uh, a VHS maybe at the time. VHS, sort of, yeah. Yeah. And, um, and you were watching with him the films of, of John Woo and, and you know, Jackie Chan. Uh, wh- why, how come your father uh, uh, liked that kind of film? How- My dad was always, he always loved sort of, he's always, he always has loved cinema, you know, and he still does. And um, his tastes were quite varied and quite wide. So, you know, my dad was, you know, in the cinemas in the 60s and the 70s and, you know, watching movies that way. Um, the Wild Bunch was a massive film for him. Like, you know, right. and and I think something that Peckinpah was doing with, with regards to like, because like, you know, as much as I love The Wild Bunch as a film, it's also an amazing action film. Um, right. The sequences in there are so well constructed and so well designed and so well edited. And obviously, I think, you know, from my father watching that for the first time in the 60s, not having seen anything else like it of its kind, it would have been revolutionary. It would have been just like, right. you know, awe-inspiring. So my dad always had an interest in that. And then I think also at the time, you know, uh, the films of like uh, Akira Kurosawa would have been, you know, right. making waves coming over into the UK. So you would have been familiar with Kurosawa's works. Yeah. And so it, it kind of like, I think that, well, that probably was the thing that got him interested in sort of films from, from, from Asia then, from, from Japan and from Hong I Kong, see. things like that. And I think it would have just snowballed from there. And so when I was growing up, I was always just aware that my dad already had an interest in, in Asian cinema. Um, and so, but when, obviously when I was a kid growing up, I was born in 1980. So when I was getting to that age of wanting to watch different types of films, not just you new know, kids and animated films. <laughs> um, you know, there was this plethora of new new action cinema coming out that, you know, Jackie Chan was the, uh, the spearhead right. of that. And so yeah. I was fascinated now. My dad would kind of watch those with me because I think he kind of recognized the rhythms of action filmmaking. So he was interested in that. But then when John Woo came onto the scene, and I think I think we were both watching TV, and I think there was, um, there might have been an MTV special on Hard Boiled. Right which I think was right. tied, I think he might've been making Hard Target at the time. So it was tied into the making of Hard you Target. You hadn't seen Hard Boiled at the time? <clears throat> I had not seen any John Woo okay. at that point, right? Okay. So then, so I think this was like probably 91, 92, something like that. Right. Then Hard Boiled comes out for rental in, in, on VHS in the UK. And when my dad saw that, that just blew his mind because it was like, oh, this is what Peckinpah was doing. And it was like the revolution of action cinema from Peckinpah, but taken to a whole nother level through John Woo. And so like he kind of recognized the scene. <laughs> well, yeah, <laughs> influenced, influenced. Right. It's like, it's like Peckinpah is the god and then John Woo is just below, you know what I mean? And, right, and, and right, so, right. so we, we kind of just fell in love with his films then. And it was like every time, we, once we knew that Hard Boiled was like almost like the seventh um, action film that he had made of that kind, then we right. were like, oh my God, there's The Killer, there's everything. A Better Tomorrow, there's you know, right, uh, you know, right. A Better Tomorrow too. And we were able to dig through his back catalog then to find all these new crazy films that were coming out from, from Hong Kong. Uh, and that was how we discovered the heroic bloodshed genre then. And, I see. So, but, that was but it. then now, what is your father <laughs> thinks of your films? Does he think you're better than John Woo now? <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> uh, no chance. Does he watch he's, all your films? He does. He, he, he watches everything. He also reads the first draft of everything I write. Oh, wow. So, um, okay. so he's, he's always taken an interest and uh, like he's very, very proud obviously of what what I've managed to achieve um but uh yeah I, I mean like you know I I've always I've always said to him like you know uh, I'm striving to try to get to where you know my my peers get to and I'm always learning on every project you know what I mean so everything right. we do you, yeah and, and you, know, you must have this as well it's like every time you make a project there are new challenges and new things that you face you know it's never exactly the same as the That's last right. project and so That's it's like, true. oh, how do you overcome those obstacles now and, and still make the film make sense and still make right. the film entertaining? So, um, so yeah, I think, he's pr- I think he's very, very proud. But, um, I mean, Peck and Paul is God. So, you know. <laughs> still, Peck and Paul is still God. No one yeah. else. Not even <laughs> Gareth Evans. <laughs> <laughs> no chance. No way. Not no even way. Evans Jr. So, um, <laughs> okay. Uh, just go back a little bit from, from the time of you deciding then to go to uh, university and study uh, script writing, right? Mm. Um, and you did a short film uh, called Samurai Monogatari. Yes, yeah. Um, yeah. 
and then I saw another short film of yours, of course, which was previous uh, uh, action. Oh, yeah, the action how, previous. That's wonderful. So how is it? I haven't seen your first one. I haven't seen the, the, uh, the short, the, the first short film. Is that the same? Is that the same? Uh, as, as... No, I mean, the, the, the Samurai Monogatari one was basically, I was doing the course um, in script writing. And yeah. uh, and I I was it was a two year course and part of the project was that you had to make uh, a, a, a one feature length script was just sort of I that see. was what you okay. had to hand in as a dissertation, and and what happened was okay. I'd been writing for about six months on something that was like intensely personal to me, um, and it was like it was like it was all filled with my own feelings and everything else, and then about five six months into the writing process all of those feelings, I didn't feel them anymore. Cause I, I <laughs> like my, 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 my situation had changed. And so things I had happen, a far, you know? <laughs> they do, things change. And I had a far more positive outlook on life than I did when I started writing that thing. <laughs> and so I found myself in a place and where one of my, one of my lecturers on the, on the, on the script writing course, he called me up on it because about six months in then he was like looking at the new pages and he was like, Hmm, you're, you're not you're not drawing from the same well of inspiration anymore like with this like if and, and i was like and it was true i was like i was i was pretending to be where i was when i was started writing it but i wasn't there anymore and it was it was hard for me to kind of force it and that's what it felt it felt forced so after six months of writing something i had to scrap it and start over again and so i had to figure out what the what the, the next thing would be and so when um when that when that project when sorry when i started you know looking Sorry, yeah. So, um, yeah. So, when I was trying to figure out what to do next for the next one, um, right. my uh, my I, I I was really nervous. I was like, oh my god, I don't know if I can finish the script. <laughs> you know, it's like six months of just not finishing anything. And so I thought, right, I better write something really, really quick. And so I wrote this short film, which was like, oh, it's a samurai tale. I wanted to write this little short short, short script, and it would be about a samurai. Who, who is basically waiting to be killed at the end of his life, is in his twilight years, and da 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 da. Right. And so um, I wrote this short script, not thinking anything of it, not thinking it would ever get made. But I was learning Japanese at the time from a, a, a student see. who was okay. in Cardiff University. And so I showed her the script, and she was like, oh, this is really cool. Um, you know, <laughs> some of my friends might want to be in it. And so I was like, <laughs> I wasn't planning to make it. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh my God, I had, I had like five Japanese students from university in Cardiff wanted to be in the short film. So I was like, oh, I guess we better make it because there's never going to be a better opportunity to do so. So, you know, we, we went out with, it was all like, like handy cams, you know, we went out with little DV handy wow. cams and just shot it in the, in the forest in Wales and stuff like that. It was all, it was all so kind of are like. Are we going to see it one day? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's like this, it's like, it, it, it's, it, it's its own thing. And it was like quite a fun thing to kind of learn from. Um, and, you know, I, I got to give a shout out because my mum. <laughs> My mum made all the costumes for the thing as really? well. Really? Yeah. Oh my She's always, goodness, that's awesome. She always, she always mentions about the fact that I always give my dad credit for introducing me to film and being <laughs> so supportive. And she says, like, you know, I made you those costumes. You never mention it. So there you go, ma'am. I've mentioned it now. Better remember uh, that. You'll yeah, I've remembered it this time. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, like the, the, the problem is, is that like we used some library music that we had clearance for, but only for like a few years. Right. So I don't know if right. I, I'd have to I get see. like the clearance on those rights again in order to kind of put it up now. But um, we, we'll see. We'll see. Who or, knows? Or get new Maybe. Music. Exactly. Okay, so and then the, pre about, the, the previous yeah, thing was separate. Yeah. So the previous thing was separate. Right. The previous so was, was kind it? of because like, I think you... it was never meant to be a short film, first and foremost. Um, the previous thing was to kind of like to play around with action design. And I, I was like, I was, I was dying to do something with action what, since I got back to UK. And so I spoke to uh, Yayan and Chechep and then Hannah. Uh, hello, Hannah. Hannah is here. At the bottom there. Hi, Hannah. Excellent. <laughs> I, I spoke to the three of them and then, you know, brought them over to the UK. And, um, and then when they came over then, it was like we, we decided to just design something and, and shoot something. And the idea was to say like, can I do the action that I yeah. design? Can I do that stuff yeah. for the guys? Go on, go on. But yeah. can we do it in a way that uh, is is non-violent? Can we do it in a way that plays into like a sort of like, oh, if this was, if I was forced to make action within a PG-13 framework, can I still get the same energy? Can I still get the same rhythms there? And so, wow. um, yeah, we had, we had a blast. And we, it was just, it was, it was literally 
the most sort of broken down version of of how this thing um, could be done. It was you know, it was like it was just it's me, crazy. Yayan, Chechep, and Hannah, just the four of us. Um, uh, they, they they got in my car. We drove to the location, which was the location was nearby <laughs> where I grew up as a child. So that that was right. old, that was my old that was my old playing ground area. You know, it was I where was we used talking to go to, to play. Yayan, and Yayan, Yayan was saying how beautiful the place was, and he enjoyed it immensely being in Wales. And of course, it was so much fun. And, yeah, with Hannah and with uh, so it was what a three day shoot or or more five days. It was um it was it was spread over five days, but. <laughs> The problem was okay. is that it was kind of broken up because it was so low in terms of budget and everything else. Like I, I was, it was just, it was just me with the camera operating the camera and then nobody else. It was just the four, four, four of us total. So they jump in the car with me. Um, I right. take my daughter to school on the school run and then right. we drive to the location, get there, film for an X amount of hours, <laughs> get back in the car and drive back home then. And so we would just get Can as much as we could. showed up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, well, no. What happened was this: the police did show up. Um, it wasn't the police. It was an armed response unit turned up to the set. Oh my goodness! Because where we were filming by the river, there was a house nearby. Right now, right. bear in mind. I mean, like, look, this thing wasn't supposed to be like. It wasn't like a short film that we were planning to release. It was just, just a test. It was just a previous right, right, test. Right. It's right? a pre-visualization, right? So, so obviously, like. The swords were just rubber. They were just they were, they were flopping around everywhere. You know what I mean? Yayan's wearing Crocs. You know, I mean, we we couldn't right. couldn't afford proper sandals or nothing. Like that. We just it was like, oh look, here's the outfits. This will be fine. Now let's just let's just make this thing in. Da 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 da. So it's a slightly a slightly higher budgeted version of like the previs I do with the guys, where it's like like right. in a in a room full of cardboard boxes. You know, but we had locations for it. And we thought we'd have a bit of fun with it. So we yeah. shot it properly. But then as we were filming. The, the person who lived in the house that was overlooking the lake, they kept, okay. they kept, they kept all they saw was me and a <laughs> pair of Wellingtons with a camera while Iko and Yayan were beating the crap out of this girl. <laughs> you know what I mean? That guy's perspective, you know? And, and that guy had no idea how much of a badass Hannah was that she was going to turn the tables on them and beat the crap out of them. Um, and so <laughs> we were filming and obviously like there's like they're clashing the swords and everything else, da 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 da. And then right. that guy, I'd explained to him, I said that, oh, you know, we're just, we're just doing a short film thing. We're no, just right. playing around, you know, nothing, nothing serious. It's all okay, da, 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 da. Well, anyway, he went off and phoned the police. And so oh my goodness. All, all of a sudden, literally within about 30 minutes, 40 minutes, an armed response tactical unit turned up and they're all like, you know, with, with you know, machine guns, you know? <laughs> And um, they turn up and we're like, oh, that's hilarious. We're, we're, we're just, we're just, we're just making a short film. We're just, we're just messing around here. And then, um, you know, I said, look, look at the swords. They're like wibbly, wobbly, wibbly, wobbly, you know, <laughs> it, it couldn't be more ridiculous, you know, and, Did that and all happen on the, the first day or on the last No, day this or? was, this would have been day three because we, we didn't okay. get to the river a bit until about day three. And okay. then, um, and then the, um, yeah, the, the police just took one look at it and they were like, yeah, they're obviously wobbly swords. They're obviously, you know, you know. and so and I, I was like, look, I'm really sorry. Cause like, you know, to, to be f fair, I should have informed them that we were going to film that day, you know, right, right, the, so the police right. don't waste their, 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 their but services. You just didn't think to... of it, right? It was just, um, know, yeah, yeah, I should have in, in hindsight, I should have, I should have done my job properly, <laughs> but, um, I, I, I messed up on that one, but, um, but then they were like, oh, look, don't worry about it. It's fine. And they, they, I said, look, we're going to be here for the next two days just for you to be aware. And so then we didn't have any problems and it was all, it was all funny then. It was all fine. So we were all, <laughs> we were all good. We could carry on then. Um, but yeah, so we, we, yeah. we quickly left the riverbank in order to go somewhere That's else great. to film the rest of it. It's so enjoyable to watch it. The fact that you upload it for free on, on YouTube, I think that's fantastic. It's just so, um, you know, I, I really enjoyed watching it. I mean, I watched oh, it nice. like, the first time I watched it, I watched it three times. I just oh, cool, didn't cool. have enough of it, you know, just keep wanting to, to watch it. So, but anyway, um, and then of course, uh, after that first short film that you did, which is uh, uh, the Samurai uh, short, uh, and then you did Footsteps. Uh, yes. You won in Swansea, right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Is still like... there? <laughs> the <film laughs> Actually, no, <laughs> that festival's long gone now as well. Uh, <laughs> long gone. It, okay. Yeah, I, I got... I, <laughs> Interesting story about that. The guy who ran the festival, um, 
so anyway, so we, we did we did footsteps. Footsteps is like my learning curve project. I love I I got a lot of love for it because of what it taught me and and the experience yeah. of making it. You know, um, there were some amazing things about like being able to be out in the in the middle of like Cardiff in the middle of different streets filming instead right. of doing what was my nine to five job back then. So I took time right. off to go and make it. And and I realized then, and then that was my moment of realizing when I was like, I have to do this as a as a job. Like this has to be my create that has to be my career. You know, I have to be able to be right. a filmmaker at some point. And so I, I loved that process. It was incredible. Um but uh so the film festival where it played, about a few years later, um when we'd made Maranto um, right. Because we were really proud and, and wanted Maranto to be seen there because we wanted to support the festival, right? right. And so um, I, I, I submitted the film to them. I said, oh, look, we've done this movie out in Indonesia. Da, 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 da. It'd be really nice if you guys could you know, screen it at the festival. Um, and he was like, yeah, yeah, that'd be great. It'd be wonderful, blah, blah, blah. And so um, we, I, I arranged with the UK distributor so we could send the Indonesian cut. And it was going to be the one and only time that the full Indonesian cut of Maranto would play in the UK. Right. And we sent him the, the DVD because it was all, it was kind of like it's a low budget festival. So it was like, it was all just DVDs right. played to a projector in a little sort of sub room type of thing. And, um, and, and basically uh, the festival was kind of designed in a way where you just got told what day your film was playing, but there was no like time, there were okay. no timetables there. And, um, <laughs> and, when, and when it finally was airing, it was like, it was like they were playing it at the same time that they were doing the award ceremony. So it was kind of, it was going to overlap <laughs> into the award ceremony, right? So, so no one was turning up to watch it, except for like four people, oh only four God. people in the entire thing to watch it, right? Which is fine, not a problem, right? But, but anyway, oh about, an hour, about an hour into the film playing, the guy who ran it came into the room apparently, and all this is like apparently because that guy feared it through, you know, second sources, second hand sources. But apparently right. when, he, when he went in there, he turned the film off after an hour <laughs> and then asked, and asked the people who were in the room, if anyone wants to watch the rest of this, I can give you the DVD. Oh it was like, I was like, and, and thankfully, um, I, I'm pretty sure it was, a, it, 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 it was Alan, who was, was a friend of mine who I know from like the old days when we were like chatting on like filmmakers right. forums and stuff like that. He was in the screening with them uh, and, and he was there and he was like saying, uh, you know, dude, like uh, he put his hand up and said, "Yeah, can I, can I, can I get it?" So that he could protect the DVD because this DVD would have just could have gone to anyone. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, it was it was not a that, no things. no, su oh no surprises that festival doesn't exist anymore. It's gone. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> but it's still historical for you. All these crazy things happening if you're doing things in Wales. <laughs> I know, I know, right? I have to so, go yeah. there. I have to go <laughs> there. Okay. Uh, um, so okay, then then of course the rest is history with Marantau, the raid and everything, and then you leave us. You leave Indonesia. What happened? Yeah. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> I was yeah, I was due us. to make um I was due to make a film um with MRC, which was going to be called Blister. Um, that right. I've been developing with them for a while, and that film we were going to shoot in Budapest, and obviously like, okay. when we were going to shoot that in Budapest, it would have meant. You know, it's a fair journey. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's still about what, like eighteen hours, I think, to get there from Jakarta. Cause you gotta do Jakarta, Singapore, right. Singapore to like see whatever. Right. Probably have to change and transfer, and so it's a long, long time. And the time zones are very different and everything else. And I knew that I'd probably be out there for at least maybe like two to three months pre-pro, and then you know, okay. however long the shoot was going to take. <laughs> and and to be honest, after the the length of the shoot of the raid two, which was ridiculously long. <laughs> I was thinking, if if this film is as long as that, I I wouldn't I wouldn't really see the family for like about a year almost. Right. You know? I mean, it was just it was just too long, you know. And so um, I, I and so we we decided to to move back to UK because then at least then it would have been uh, you know a, a one hour flight. It's a different right. you know, one hour flight from London to, to to Budapest, or you know twenty hours to get to Jakarta. So I, I would never be able to do the travel at all. I just wouldn't be able to do it to get back to, 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 to home if my home was still in Jakarta. And so, you know, we had, we'd been, obviously we'd made like the Raid 1 and the Raid 2 and we'd done quite well with that. And we were, at that time, we were still trying to tee up um, Night Comes for us with Timo. Um, right. And then when, when that kind of went a little bit skew if and wrong, um, yeah. then the idea of moving because Blister was kicking in made a lot more sense. 
And so uh, we made the move back to UK then, and then and then uh, I was able to be close to closer to home then, and closer to family as well. Then I mean, I, I'd been there for eight years. You know, I'd been in Indonesia for eight years, and I had a wonderful it's time out there. Yeah. And 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 to be honest, like I'll always I'll always have that affinity because Indonesia gave me my career. Like you know, I make no bones about it. If I didn't move there, I would never be where I am right now. I'd never be able to be doing what I get to do right now. So you I, get I mean, to lay the path for our action film too, Pagaret. Uh, so yeah, uh, thank you for that I, too. Well, I, I feel, and for me, I feel fortunate that I got to be there at that time because, you know, it's like, yeah, I, I was out there, but then Iko was there, Yayan was there, Chechuk was there, you know, and all the guys were there. And, 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 you know, and I got to, I got to work with all of them. I got to, I got all, all I had to do was just point a camera at them. And then they were the ones with the magic, you know, I mean, they, they have that incredible ability and, the thing that's amazing about about all those guys, about Iko, Yaya, and Chechep, um, Veri, and Hannah, and Julie, and, and all these guys that have been you know, yeah. you know at the forefront of the action filmmaking going on there right now in Indonesia, is that they understand the camera. They understand how to best represent yeah. the martial art for the camera. So for us, it was quite easy. You know, it was like, oh, point it at them. And then they right. will give you all the magic then and, right. and the rhythms of it. So, yeah. Right. Yeah. So, yeah, well, you, you guys create magic. So that's that's something... Wonderful. Um, okay, so Gangs of London, um, are you still going to Hollywood? Um, not so much, not in a rush to go to Hollywood, <laughs> to be honest. Um, I, 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 I've, I've, I've obviously, in a way, since I got to the UK, when I, when I came here, we did, um, we did a film called Apostle before Gangs of London. And that introduced yes, me yes. to um, my producing partner, Ed Talvan. And Ed Talvan had made like Hinterland and then another TV show called Hidden. And he's, he, he's an amazing talent and, and, and is so good. He's kind of like my Welsh equivalent of, of Mas Toro. So in a way, it's like I, okay. I found that, that person for me here in, the, in, in Wales then as well. Um, like great with notes on, on all the scripts, you know, challenges the sort of the creativity of it. And then you know, helps me find good creative solutions to, you know, the, you know, the age old problem of we don't have the money to do that. Um, right. So, you know, he's, right. he's very, very great as yeah, a sort yeah, of creative yeah. producer for me then. And then, um, and so uh, we've gone into business together. We've been talking about like doing a bunch of things that we want to do here in the UK. And so, you know, we're developing projects to follow up now. After, now the gangs is done um in terms of season one right. uh, i can go off and, and figure out the the next film now and so i'm looking forward to making that again okay. with ed you're not and then... you're not doing season two of gangs of london um i think all of that stuff's still in the air at the moment because the show just came out a few okay. weeks ago and so i think like, it's, it's too early yeah, to yeah. really say what what the situation is with season two yeah. but um you know for, for me right now my my primary focus is the next film um and it's something that I've been writing for the last five months now, something like that, four or five months. Oh, that's so um, exciting. So, so yeah, forward. it's going to be fun. It's, um, it's, a, it's, a, it's, it's back to action again, um, yeah. contemporary, um, but it's going to be a little bit, a little bit tiny, 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 tiny bit more mainstream than what I've done in the past. So okay. it's, uh, right. it's, set, it's, set during, it's set during the Christmas holidays. So it's like two right. days before Christmas wow, and it's a okay. breakneck sort of like high, high energy oh sort of God. action film then. So I have should to be make fun. a confession. I could not watch Apostle. I think I only saw <laughs> the first ten minutes, and it was just so eerie. You know, it's like <laughs> you saw me watching the Wraith one and the Wraith two. Uh, um, you know, for me that's already uh, uh, you know so intense. But watching yeah. Apostle, I thought, my God, it's so. Yeah, I didn't get to see that one. Uh, no so worries. Yeah, I might. <laughs> But I, do want I have to a lot of family one. members that said the same thing. Oh really? Oh really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, my God. Um, but uh, in one of your interviews, I don't know if you were joking or not. You said something like uh, the fact that action films, or what what it is that you've been doing, in a way, it's a musical thing. Uh, mm. uh, for you, rhythm uh, with film action goes together. It's it's like it's one thing basically. And I don't know if you were joking or not. You said mm, maybe I tried that genre. Uh, no, I'd, one of these days, like a musical film. Genuinely, I'd love to do it at some yeah. point. Definitely, I think yeah. Um, it, it's it's a, I, I got that curiosity to see like. I know that we borrow from musicals in order to put you know when we create action cinema because yeah. it, it's like when I when I talk to like and and the other people I haven't spoken about yet but like Fajar and Augie who have been like you know my composers on on all the things right. I've worked on up until now and and you know sound sound designers as well you know, on the rain and the rain two, and Apostle. Um, 
when they watch the action sequences, it's almost like there's like an internal metronome going on. There's like a rhythm yeah. to it, so that um, yeah. when they when they when it comes to the action scenes, they find those the easiest to write music for sometimes because there's just a built-in rhythm to to the nice. sequences themselves. And so, um, yeah, I think I think I think they do go hand in hand. So I'm curious yeah. to see if the way I shoot action would work for musicals, would work for dance, would work for you know oh, big dance fantastic. numbers. So What's I'm your curious favorite musical to see film? Um, Singing in the Rain, without oh, a doubt. Yes, without um, a doubt. Ashamedly, I'd not seen Singing in the Rain till about three years ago. So I came to it very, very late. Um, right. And then I watched it and just immediately fell in love with it. It's just such a, it's a, it's a masterpiece. It's it such a brilliant, amazing. special it film. It is amazing. Well, yeah. I, I'm looking forward. I hope you will make a music on it. That would be... That would be out of the world, you know, that would be just so crazy. Uh, yeah, it could be fun. So it could be really fun. I hope. Okay, there's a lot of questions here. Uh, I'm just going to look um, through the stickers here. Um, there you go. Already a question there. Can we see your oh, okay. student movie, the Samurai movie? <laughs> <laughs> I'll see. I'll see what I can do. I'll see, what I, I'll see if I can get that. Um, if I can get the music cleared, I'll see if I can post it up online. There's a lot right, of other okay. short films I did make before that, which you're never going to see. But maybe, okay. maybe I'll see if I can get the samurai one note up. Okay, there's another question here. Do you audition people without an agent? If so, how can we audition for you? That's from <laughs> Natasha. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, usually, usually all of those things are kind of controlled by a casting director. So as soon as you hire a casting director, they'll right. put out a a blast saying that, oh we're looking for you know these people that people and stuff like that and then it's a it's an open forum in that respect so right. you know i think I, I i i defer that to a casting director to answer whether it's with or without an agent it's better that way it. yeah right this from riri gareth oh hey Riri's here <laughs> hey Riri, how are you doing man <laughs> tell us about your indonesian crew that you bring along to the production of apostle and also gangs of london Okay, great. So, um, yeah, we were very, we were very fortunate, very keen to kind of, it's hard to bring everyone over because you just can't do it, you know, because <laughs> each time you bring someone over, it's work permits, it's, you know, and also it's unions right. and things like that, and, 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 and there are guidelines and stuff like that. And so for certain key personnel, we were able to bring over some of our crew from Indonesia to work with us um, on, on the, on the, uh, on, on the parcel and on gangs. So we brought over Yudi, um, who's the incredible camera right. assistant and focus yes. puller that we've had, you know, Yudi Giant. Who, yes, um, Yudi and, Giant, and so he's course. come over for a parcel and for gangs. And then also Danu, um, who is our dit guy. Um, so he came over as well for both of those projects as well. Um, and, and, you know, I love them to, love them to bits. They're incredible and such good vibes as well when they come on set. Because the thing that's great about Yudi and Danu is, is that from the get-go, from like day one, they bonded so well with the sort of the, the Welsh really? crew and the, yeah. sort of, and, and, the, and the London crew when we worked on both projects that they just, they just fit right in. And, and they had a, I think they had a great experience and a great time working on them as well. Um, and then obviously then further to that, we also brought on board um, Faja and Ogi, who have come right. over twice now to do all the music wow. uh, for, for, and, and the sound design for the film, for a film of possible, then did the music for, for Gangs of London. And so they, they've come over and done that for us. Um, and that, that's amazing because it's like, you know, essentially it's put them in a house somewhere, preferably detached house, so that right. they can play their music as loud as they want to and do wow. as much you know, noise as possible. And then I just go over and just hang out with them. And then we just, you know, discuss ideas for the score, discuss ideas for the sound design. And it's, it's a real great process. And I love, love working with them in that capacity. But, the, the, you know, those are the people that we brought over. But we've also managed to keep working with um, Andy, uh, who does my VFX work. Who has been okay. basically my VFX? He's been my VFX artist since the very, 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 very so long, beginning. Long distance work, you mean? He did some. He did some online work for me on the documentary okay. way back when. That's how long ago wow. I've known him. I, and, and so he oh, came on. He wow. did Maranta, the raid, the raid two, Apostle, right. and now and and uh, VHS two as well. The short film we did for that, and then also the Gangs of London as well. So we've been able to throw a lot of VFX work to Andy because. Andy is, is one of the few people that can just really tap in straight away into what I want visually from the VFX. Um, and right. he adds tons of production value to, to what we are able to create in camera. So he just adds a whole other layer on top of that. Um, so yeah, I, I always want to keep working with Andy as well. 
everybody always said that they've learned a lot from you. You're a perfectionist, but also you share things a lot, uh, you know, with the crew. Uh, mm. And, you know, they, they get to, to learn a lot when, when they're with you. So I think that's, that's also something, something good. So there are a lot of questions, um, Gareth, that, uh, again, friends who are asking about the rate three. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to repeat because you may be coming in late. All you have to do is go into the special uh, Empire Spoiler special podcast. Uh, Gareth uh, clearly uh, uh, stated there about the plot of the Ray 3, if it does happen. And also the possibility that maybe it doesn't, it will not happen. So I mean, you, you can check there. Uh, also on IndieWire interview. Uh, so that's on the Ray 3. Uh, but uh, I cannot avoid this, Gareth. A lot of people are asking about death stroke. What happened? Uh -huh. Yeah, <laughs> um, basically, the Deathstroke thing is pretty straightforward. Um, way back when, I had a phone call about it, and right. they were interested in, I think they were asking me about a couple of different um, project titles at the time, and I kind of, I took a look at a bunch of the characters, and Deathstroke kind of was interesting to me. So, uh, you know, right. I'm not, I, I'm not going to pretend for one second that I'm a hardcore sort of comic book fan and know everything about the characters. I don't. Um, right. And I think that's kind of almost a good thing when you're going to make a film adaptation because if you kind of if you go full in, you're like, oh, I love everything about this character, and I've always right. wanted to do it. You won't find anything go. new about it, right? Yeah, yeah you you got to you got to be able to push and pull with the material. You know what I mean? And so yeah. um, it was it was I had a phone call about it. We chatted about it. I spoke to Joe, who was going to play the role, Joe Mantinello, who was going to play right. the role of Deathstroke, and we chatted about the approach. I told him what I was interested in. I told him you know, the sort of the idea of a storyline that I had for it. Um, right. Wanting to do something that felt a little bit lean, more like a sort of a hundred minute runtime, not the two hour plus um, comic book movie right. style. And, and to do something that felt a little bit like, you know, the sort of South Korean noir um, crime films that I loved watching, you know, that kind of tone, that kind of intensity to it. And so I think everyone was sort of interested and it was all sort of like moving on. It was going to move along to the next step, whatever that was going to be. But then right. um, I think there was a, a change of personnel in the background, as happens quite a lot with studios. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then that project stopped being a priority for them. And so I when see. that project stopped being a priority, it just kind of fell by the wayside. And then I just didn't get another phone call then so uh, they're yeah, lost it's, Gareth they're lost uh, it's all right who, who knows <laughs> it might come back around again in another five years or so you never know really with these things you know but um yeah yeah anyway with this IG live thing we only get one hour so I have six minutes uh, left because okay. after that we'll just go off um so when will you come back though to Indonesia I know you have you have the, your next project and you've been talking to Joe and, and Iko and, and everybody else when when will this be when are you coming back um, I don't know I think I think if I I mean obviously coming back for a trip to see people is definitely on the cards that's that's okay. ideal you know once once this all lifts I'd love to kind of come back and get to enjoy the country again you know what I mean um, right. in terms of in terms of working on a project it, it it depends on what the project is. It depends on w w where I am and, and what's happening. Um, obviously, like you know, I've kind of I've got I've got this next one that I'm I'm planning and working on at the moment, um, and then I've got another project, another two projects which are kind of in development, which okay. still keep this me here. These are all future here. projects. These are all future um, projects. Well, I got <laughs> I got one. I got two feature film projects that okay. are kind of lined up. Um, which could kind of follow next. Obviously, all okay. of this is like up in the air because it depends on where we are in the world globally right now. We just don't right. really know, you know. Um, and then, um, and then potentially there might be another uh, another TV show concept that could be quite special okay. that me and Ed Talvan are in very, very, very early, early, early discussions on at the moment, which could be good. So um, we're, we're, you know, it's too early to kind of say anything really about the other ones. But um, but yeah, the next one, Havoc, is the one that I'd be make it next for sure okay well that's great we're all looking forward for that and we'll also be waiting for you right here because everybody uh do miss you a lot um okay for the last five minutes i'm just gonna yeah. ask random questions okay cool um do you believe everything happens for a reason Garrett? <laughs> i i think i think i have to um uh, <laughs> because of the <laughs> Because of the circumstances that led me to Indonesia right. and then to end up right. in this industry. Yeah, I kind of do. I do feel that. Yeah. Yeah. Some people don't, but I, I, I do believe in that too. And looking at, you, you know, how, how the path has been for you. 
I guess yes, yeah. everything happens for a reason. So it's it's insane, <laughs> isn't it? Isn't it? Okay, next question. Uh, when was the last time you cried? Uh, and why? Very recently. It would have been very recently. Um, probably about a week ago. Okay, um, what happened? It was, it's really, it, I, I was watching, um, I was, I, I was working, I was writing at the time. And as I was writing, the, the okay. TV was on next to me and it was just playing and it was showing a broadcast of The Elephant Man. And um, I only have okay. to look at that film for like about a second to immediately just emotionally get destroyed by it. Um, and, and literally the moment right. I looked across the screen, was the scene when um, when uh, John Merrick is in the the theater and they all give him a standing ovation, and it's like the pinnacle right. of, of the sort of the good feeling that he's going to get. And as soon as I saw it, like yeah, it just builds, and so oh, yeah, that that film, God. that film, that film is one of those films I've only probably seen it maybe four or five times. The first right. time I watched it, I, I obviously I cried towards the very tail end, and every time right. I watch it since, I cry earlier and earlier and earlier in that movie because it's just. It's the it's the inevitability of it. It's an amazing film, thought, a wonderful who film. Thought, the guy who makes films with lots of blood could cry easily just watching a drama. <laughs> I'm awful. I'm terrible for that. I mean, like I I think it's I think it's maybe since becoming a parent, but like I get really easily sort of like you know triggered by stuff now. I get super emotional about the simplest things. Like if so, even if That's something amazing. is mildly happy, then I just start to get a little bit silly about it. So yeah, right. it's not good. So my last question then, uh, what's your favorite thing about Indonesia? Um, the people, um, without doubt. I, I said it from the very first moment I went there when we did that documentary. Um, right. It was such an incredible place to visit and everyone was so kind and so giving we were we were in the middle of of nowhere we were in the middle of the jungle with a family um that we were filming at the time and right. you know we were a crew of maybe like eight or ten of us at the time and even though this family didn't have a whole lot you know in terms of like you right. know in terms of finance and everything else right. they they made sure that they invited us into their home so we could have dinner with them that night you know and I, we just met them um, and and right. and they wanted us to be fed. They wanted us to feel like we were we were welcomed. And that that spirit of that that kind of humble spirit has been with me ever since. So that's right. always been something I associate with Indonesia. I also heard though, uh, Gareth, that the one thing about Wales also, if you go to Wales, what they people will remember mostly is the Welsh people because they're also so kind and humble and warm. So I guess with Wales, that's and that's Indonesia, nice to hear. Right? <laughs> Hopefully, yeah, that's what it is. It's the spirit. <laughs> The collaboration yeah. that's wonderful i got one minute so i want to thank everyone who's here thank you gareth so much for having oh, this thank talk you. with me